in the memory of late Mrs. Alka Hemant Patil. We are glad to present our audio articles for inspiring disabled persons to achieve greater heights in their career. Under the project of Client Service Department of National Association for the Blind, India, to empower the disabled in tribal, rural and semi-urban areas of our country. Things seen are temporal and things unseen are eternal. Helen Keller Sangeeta Agarwal Sangeeta is an unusual lady in many respects. She is a distinguished scholar, a linguist and a dedicated social activist. She is also unmarried and has an adopted son. Sangeeta was born with an underdeveloped optic nerve which allowed her to see dimly until the age of seven and then faded away. Her childhood was spent with her grandparents in Lucknow because her eyes were being treated there. Sangeeta remembers the bright colours that she could see then and the black bold letters of the daily newspaper. Sangeeta was educated in a blind school and ever since she can remember, she has been fascinated by languages, particularly Sanskrit. She has also had a deep desire to contribute something meaningful to society. Studies were not so easy as there were limited resources for visually impaired children. There was no text to Braille facility and so Sangeeta had to transcribe her textbooks in Braille herself with the help of a wooden writing slate. Sangeeta passed the CBSE board exam with merit, securing 10th place from amongst 2 lakh students who appeared for the exam. She then went on to complete her BA, MA, MPhil and PhD in Sanskrit from the Delhi University. She was the recipient of gold medals at the graduation and post-graduation levels. Gifted with a flair for languages, Sangeeta enrolled in short courses and learnt Russian and German to be able to compare these two languages with Sanskrit and analyse the differences and similarities. In 1993, Sangeeta started Shubham, an institute that caters to the needs of persons with disabilities. It does rehabilitation work, creating employment opportunities for the disabled and awareness on issues related to the world of disabilities in general. In connection with this, she attended many conferences as a social activist and presented papers at local and national levels. At a professional level, Sangeeta was selected as a permanent lecturer in Sanskrit at the Langat Singh College in Muzaffarpur in Bihar. She was one amongst the 10 teachers chosen out of 1,400 applicants for the job. In 2000, Sangeeta was awarded the Neelam Kanga Prize for being the first blind lady to have done a doctorate in Sanskrit. While Sangeeta felt satisfied at receiving the prize in recognition of her work, she feels that certificates of merit bring only temporary joy, whereas achievement in the chosen field of work is what brings real fulfilment. Sangeeta did not wish to marry, but a few years ago she felt that she wanted a baby. So, in 1996, she adopted a beautiful little baby boy, Satvik. The baby brought out the tender mother in Sangeeta, who, after a few awkward moments, took to motherhood with complete elan. Even though she lives in a joint family, surrounded by the children of her brothers, Satvik completed Sangeeta's life and made her feel special by being her very own. Sangeeta continues to lecture and strives hard to do better at it every day. She writes papers and journals and continues her developmental work as secretary of Shubham. But most of her free time is now spent with her little son who lights up her life with joy and renewed hope. A faith to live by, a self to live with and a purpose to live for. Bob Harrington Anjali Arora 
Anjali's list of achievements makes for very interesting reading. A practicing advocate with the Delhi State Bar Council, Anjali has directed a play, participated in music competitions, won prizes for her essays and has argued in debates. She contributes articles on current affairs to newspapers and is invited on television shows to express her views about solutions for disabled persons. At the age of 12, Anjali developed a high fever and lost her vision. Her doctors hoped that a corrective operation would restore her sight and so Anjali treated her impairment as a temporary inconvenience and continued with her studies. Three surgeries later, the doctors had to admit sadly that the successful corneal transplant they had hoped for had not quite worked. The loss of my eyesight was slow. My eyes were bandaged up for nearly a year due to all the operations, so I did not feel a drastic change, Anjali says. Her parents had meanwhile done a full research on rehabilitation possibilities and so Anjali was introduced to NEB Delhi. She learnt Braille and also restarted her education. After passing her 12th standard exam, Anjali joined Jesus and Mary College in Delhi to study political science. She topped all three years and secured third position in Delhi University when she graduated in 1995. Anjali then passed her LLB from the Law Faculty of Delhi University in 1998. She also became fully conversant with computer operations. Always interested in uplifting the cause of the disabled, Anjali presented a paper on abuse of the handicapped child while she was doing her LLB. She also participated in a legal literacy awareness program organized by a senior advocate of the Supreme Court. Anjali feels very strongly about the lack of opportunities that exist for the disabled. She feels that they are marginalized in nearly all aspects. A non-disabled person is thought to be more competent and meritorious than a person who is disabled. This is one presumption I have to demolish time and time again, she says gravely. Anjali's personal struggle to get where she has alerted her to the need for the battle she is fighting for the disabled today. While her family was her strong support network, Anjali faced stumbling blocks at every turn in her life. She felt the need for an integrated education where she would be faced with competition and challenges instead of being exempted from taxing subjects. The reason she chose to do law against all advice was because she saw in it a profession that would give her an edge over the others to act against discrimination of the disabled. It would allow her a lifetime of devotion to the cause of bettering the lot of the differently abled. In her individual capacity, Anjali teaches Braille and English to blind students. She offers her services as a professional lawyer free of cost to NAB Delhi. She proposes to provide a support system in court for those whose cases do not come up for hearing. There are no current newspapers and magazines for the blind, she laments. Information does not reach us as soon as it should. We don't have an employment newspaper in Braille, we do not have access to India Today or Time magazine. We are still an invisible minority. Anjali works from her home as a civil lawyer. She files public interest litigation to protect the disabled and raises her voice wherever she finds an injustice is being done. Life is a struggle, she admits quite candidly. Every day is an episode in itself, but an interesting one. Anjali was a shy, introverted youngster. Talking books should have come into my life when I was younger and timid, she says. Then I did not socialize and needed things to do. It was then that Anjali learnt music. Now she has no time for it because she is busy with her job and social commitments. 
When Anjali received the Neelam Kanga Prize in 2000 for the distinction of being a blind practicing lady advocate, it gave her morale a tremendous boost. I felt great, she says simply. I felt that recognition had come at last and I felt encouraged. Anjali wants to focus on small things that make a big difference. She wants to be even more active in launching community-based disability support systems. But most importantly, Anjali wants to meet people from diverse communities and learn how far the disability movement has reached around the world. Not very fond of travelling herself, she is uncertain how this will happen. But for dynamic Anjali, anything in life is possible. Hers is a story of determination, courage and accompl accomplishing great things. Her focus to fight against the lack of access for people with disabilities is clear and nothing can dampen her deep passion. Concentration and Dedication the intangibles are the deciding factors between who won and who lost. Tom Siva Jyoti Bala Chasatya Tall, slim, attractive Jyoti Bala, a bright science graduate, a scholar and a professor of biology at MD College Perel, suffered from meningitis and lost total vision at the age of 28 years. Quite unprepared for this sudden tragedy, Jyoti lived in hope for the first three years as her inconsolable father encouraged her to believe that one day she would see again. And while she waited, she helped around the house and tried to accustom herself to her new circumstances. When eventually the finality of her situation confronted her, Jyoti felt defenseless and terrified. She had never interacted with the visually impaired so far except to give them arms at traffic lights. She wondered what her fate would be. How would I go to the temple every day? Who would take me to the doctor, I wondered, she says, thinking back on those early days of confusion and nervousness. Eventually, after deep thought, Jyoti rounded up her courage and wrote to her friend and colleague Maya, a lecturer of history at MD College. I was always fond of Jyoti, Maya says. She is a girl of determination and good spirit. We all were so shocked and sorry about her sudden misfortune. Jyoti's letter came as a desperate cry for help and Maya heard it with her heart. She got to work immediately and with help from everyone she could mobilize, conducted a thorough search. That is how NAB India was discovered and after Jyoti's father had satisfied himself, he gently introduced her to it. Once she joined the NAB Rehabilitation Center, existence took on a new meaning for Jyoti. She learnt to get back into the mainstream of life which could easily have sidestepped her. Her interaction with other visually handicapped ladies made her feel privileged. I realised how lucky I was, she reminisces. I had been blessed with sight once. I had seen the beauty of a rose and the fire of a brilliant sunset and the memory of it was mine to keep forever. Some of my friends at NAB India had never even experienced daylight. The three-month training program at NAB prepared Jyoti for her new life in every respect. She learnt many new skills including home science, orientation mobility, braille and the vital training which helped her to become a telephone operator. Jyoti plunged into her new way of life with gusto. NAB India promoted a philosophy of assuming personal responsibility which fired her self-determination and Jyoti surged forward towards independence once more. One point of nervousness remained, however, and that was travelling alone, but her brother always remained at her side. One day, her brother was late in coming to fetch her and Jyoti decided to try her newly learnt white cane skill to find her way home. And she did. 
the cane, viewed with deep misgiving so far, metamorphosed into the symbol of independence for Jyoti. She did not have to be a prisoner to her blindness anymore. It was through NAB India that Jyoti got a job with MTNL as a telephone operator and right from the start she excelled. Always a giving person, Jyoti needed to offer something back to society now. She was already an active life member of NAB India and the Blind Graduate Forum of India, but she felt the need to do more. The concept of healing through Reiki appealed to her scientific mind and Jyoti decided to give it a try. Reiki would keep her healthy and productive and would allow her to help others. So the enterprising lady, imbued as she was with good values, faith, trust, love and integrity, all perfect ingredients, became a Reiki master. Jyoti has given back energetically to society and continues to do so every day. Her trusted friend Maya is full of praise for Jyoti's ability to cure. She has a natural gift. I turn to her every time I am in need of healing, she says fondly. Along with participating in workshops, conducting leadership training programs and being on the Committee for Advancement of the Status of Blind Women, NAB India, Jyoti heals the blind and the sighted through her Reiki. She conducts workshops and restores faith, touching many lives with her special brand of caring. And so, NAB India, her second mother, as she refers to the organization, was delighted to choose her as one of the three dynamic ladies to be awarded the prestigious Neelam Kanga Prize in 2000 for her mastery in Reiki. The prize reinforced Jyoti's resolve to propagate Reiki as a medium for peace and happiness in the world. Jyoti's success in life is twofold. Helping others to overcome their difficulties makes it that much easier for her to face her own, leading to a sweet harmony of peace in an otherwise unstable world. Hemant J. Patil Honorary Secretary National Association for the Blind, India